Welcome to this week's program of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. And today, our guests are James Sullivan of Blue Bee TV and Jonathan Murphy of the Geek Club Books, and they're going to be discussing their enterprises here. And before we begin, uh, Will, what's with your shirt? I'm glad you asked. This week's shirt is my best buddy's shirt. The, uh, they are... I am a member of Best Buddies, and they they have a friend. They're having their friendship walk next month. Today we're mixing things up a little, and we're going to be beginning our program with our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Keith. Hello, everyone. Today I'd like to dis, uh, share on Saturday, March 11th, is the 2017 Resource Fair or Resource Conference at John O'Connell High School, 2355 Folsom Street. Um, annual resource with an opportunity for families of children with disabilities, concerns, or special health care needs, and the professionals who work with them to gather and exchange knowledge and, and experience. And for more info, go to www.connect.supportforfamilies.com. Sunday, March 12th, is a sensory-friendly hours at the Tech Museum of Innovation at 201 South Market Street in San Jose. It is a time for families to enjoy quieter, less crowded visits to the tech at a discounted rate. This opportunity may be appealing to parents of children who have mobility challenges, struggle to communicate, or become easily overwhelmed by stimuli. More info, www.thetech.org. Uh, another thing happening that day, March 12th, Swan Lake Workshop from 2.30 to 4 p.m. at the Chris Hellman Center for Dance, 455 Franklin Street. It'll be an incredible opportunity to have your special needs family engage with one of their region's most beloved cultural treasures with one of their most popular ballets. The event features a performance session, interactive movement session, hands-on activity room, quiet room, and the wonderful music of Tchaikovsky's famous score, photos with Swan Lake dancers. More information, go to autismfunbayarea.org. And one last thing, Saturday, March 18th, Ascend will have a program that will feature a panel of people who have experienced conditions that either look somewhat like autism or are often cure it. There are planned representatives of disorders in nonverbal learning, social, pragmatic communications, attention deficit, hyperactivity, obsessive compulsion, depression, and others and more details is to come. You can go to www.ascend.org. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. And now we'll begin the discussion with our guests, uh, Jonathan Murphy and James Sullivan. Gladly. Tell us about your background in the autism com community. Well, um, I was diagnosed when I was about mm, 12 or 13 years old. I, at the time, I went to a, uh, uh, a, a, a public school where they didn't, um, and I was, I, I, I felt there was something different about me. I was kind of, I liked to keep to myself more. I liked uh, uh, more quiet. I didn't really like to go for a lot of physical or a lot of loud activities. So when I, um, I, w I went to a new school when I was about 11 or 12, and um, which was a, a private school called the Stanbridge Academy. And they uh, they diagnosed me, and they I turns out I have uh, Asperger's syndrome, and um, you know good schools, uh, you know um, I managed to get into the uh, acting, which really kind of helped build my confidence, and uh, opened me up to the world. And now I uh, I like to uh, give kind of give back and stand as like an advocate for that, you know, people with, even on the spectrum can do great things. Really good. Mm -hmm. In my case, um, I, uh, I, I have a very similar story as Jonathan. I was, I believe I was diagnosed at the age of 10. Um, I, I had a habit on the, on the playground myself of, uh, of sometimes actually Actually, not just being by myself, but uh, also staying on the playground if uh, it, even after the even after the bell rang and everything, and it was a lot of uh, what they dubbed suspicious behavior at the time, and so I uh, 
I got tra I got transferred to to different schools, and ultimately what I ended up with was I started. By the time I was going to high school, I had a, a full on uh, student aide going everywhere everywhere with me, and uh, I'm I'm actually very I'm actually very um, uh, thankful for that because my my aides and my teachers and my uh, my folks were all very supportive of me during that t particular time. I later got into acting myself, but uh, I'm not quite as I, I never quite uh, got as far along as this guy here. So well, he he's he branched out because he he does more things. I'm mostly good at the acting thing, and I, I edit my own like sound when I do voice recordings and stuff. But this guy he runs the full gamut of like. Uh, writing, directing himself, uh, mm -hmm. produce and producing and, and editing the uh, these these uh, things which we will will discuss. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What is the Geek Book Club? Geek Club Books, uh, I, bl I believe, is the 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 name of the organization. Mm -hmm. But uh, you want to you want to take it from here? Uh, I will I will do my best. So the um, uh, Geek Club Books was started uh, by uh, me and uh, my my mother uh, Jody Murphy. Uh, she wanted to do something that could help me um, give give me uh, my talents like a place to stand, while also um, advocating on behalf of the autism community because you know I'm I'm obviously a part of that, and so what can we do to kind of use my talent to but also like kind of give back to the community. And we found that um, a great way to reach people, particularly, you know, younger people, uh, uh, children, like kids and even young adults, is through popular culture. Mm -hmm. So we created um, this, this um, interactive uh, comic book called uh, The Mighty League Volume One, which I, uh, the first one was the, uh, the Terrible Taunting, Yes. Which is about me. Um, it's kind of based off my life story, and it's um, <clears throat> the thing about this uh, this this com this comic is that's so cool is it plays like a Saturday morning cartoon almost, where you have a this little boy or girl. That's the cool thing. You can you can change the gender if you want to. Um, this little boy or girl who is you know imagines him or herself as a superhero. Fighting, uh, you know, um, um, saving the day uh, against a, a bully, going up against a bully, and how you know how they how they deal with that. And um, when you look deeper into the uh, the the story, you realize that oh, this kid is on the uh, autistic spectrum. But we we decide to create like really good care. We want to create like entertaining and well written good characters first, and then have it be like oh, these are autistic characters who can fill these great roles. Mm -hmm. It's good like representation. And um, so it kind of just went out, uh, grew from there. We became a, a nonprofit in about uh, 2014. And um, we kind of, do, we tell the stories of uh, people with autism through like uh, uh, curriculum, um, web series. We have this thing called the Pen Friend Project, which, uh, you know, gives writers a chance to express themselves. We have blogs. We're uh, we're going to start a podcast. Um, hopefully Excellent. soon. Excellent. Hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. And we have the the Blue Bee TV series. Which um, uh, James, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, how yeah. that works? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, uh, the series Blue Bee TV uh, came about um, what about uh, going on going on two years ago now. Yeah, I think so. I, uh, I met I met uh, Jonathan and and uh, his mom. Uh, several years ago, when we when when they first started uh, when they first um, when when we first started uh, trying to get more and more involved in the in the autism community, uh, one of the things that my my family runs uh, is um, it is an organization called Pre Love Toys. Which is is uh, an organization which hires uh, uh, different um, uh, folks of uh, of different of different shall we say shades to to work on uh, on uh, uh, re restoring and repairing uh, old toys and uh, sticking them back in on toy store shelves and whatnot and so 
we we came around and started getting more involved in uh, local autism meets and whatnot mm -hmm. and that's how i met up with these guys mm -hmm. and uh, jody uh, saw some of uh, his mom saw some of uh, the videos the web shows that i already do for uh, uh for different websites on on youtube and she said well would james like to would like like to come on and start doing a video series uh for for our sh for our website and that's how we started off with a video log series called Tude Sense mm -hmm. which uh which there's about uh, four episodes of and then from there she said uh, wait a minute I got this I got this sponsor from uh, uh a toy company called Kale Concepts that um had does these electronic uh talking animals that that teachers actually use in in classrooms to communicate with uh, students who have different learning disabilities and whatnot. And uh, so those are called Blueby Pals. And so from there, Blueby TV was essentially born. And what it is, it's a, it's a collaboration between me and Jonathan. Um, I'm basically hosting the show and uh, Jonathan comes on and he voices all the different uh, all the different characters. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we have about uh, we're, we're, we plan to do eight episodes. Uh, we currently have about five out now. Yeah, we have five episodes out, and the way that the way that the show goes is I'm basically writing everything. Uh, Jody gives me the uh, the top, the talking points that uh, she wants me to incorporate into the script. I come up with the idea, and how to how to write it into into form, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, the the uh, the script runs through a, a couple different heads over at over at Geek Club Books and its associated organizations. Once a, once the scripts get approved, I basically set stuff up uh, a green screen, and shoot myself in in front of a camera, and what we get is sort of a a high tech uh, a high tech Mister Rogers neighborhood with uh, with Jonathan here doing voiceovers for all the different characters with a uh, with the uh, Bluetooth Teddy Ruxpins yes. essentially. <laughs> Yes. I, I also want to add, <clears throat> before I forget, um, in terms of what we're going to do in the future, uh, aside from the podcast, James and I are both, uh, we plan on doing like, we have an assembly coming for uh, school in April, and we plan on like kind of going to various schools and all over the, all across the plin <laughs> peninsula, all across the, thank you, all across the peninsula to, um, you know, have, help spread the word and kind of, you know, just, uh, help spread the word about uh, autism and acceptance. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the topics that Blue Bee TV has gone into so far? Well, uh, in particular, the first the first episode, and we got five all together, you can check them out uh, online. We've, we got the links provided and everything. Um, the first episode was called What is Autism? And basically it's covering the, the groundwork on uh, on different aspects of what uh, what defines uh, what defines you know symptoms of autism and what and what have you. The second episode was what are people with uh, autism like, which again very self-explanatory. Um, uh, discussing discussing different uh, behaviors uh, that some folks uh, exhibit. Uh, the third, the third episode was called "Let's Talk." It's all about how folks, uh, folks communicate with, uh, like if if I say if a if a person with autism, depending on their severity, um, may may talk like a, a normal uh, every well everyday human being, and then some some folks who are less verbal may may use uh may use a tablet or something mm -hmm. like that which uh which is perfectly fine you know I, I work in the school system i've seen i've seen uh kids who very very brilliant minds with uh you know 
tab tablets and whatnot, just wrote stuff that I couldn't, I don't think I'd be able to write in ages. The, um, um, yeah, and uh, I, I work with uh, kids too, and um, some of them, yeah, there's like one who has a, a tablet and stuff, and, you know, he... He understand, you know, they understand what you're saying, but uh, you know, it's hard for them to like express it. So there's just there's just so many different ways for them to communicate now, which is really cool. Uh, the next episode was the friendship game. Mm -hmm. Talk about friendship, which <clears throat> I, in my opinion, was my one of my favorites to record. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um, can you tell us a little bit about that one? Since well, you enjoyed it. A do you lot. remember? Well, do you remember uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Yes, I uh, do. We just fill, by we just uh, filled in. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like that. And we had like uh, like lifelines and stuff. It was all presented in a in a game show, and it was a great. I, I enjoyed it because it, it kind of shook things up. It shook like the the formula. Mm -hmm. you know, we kind of built like this really good, uh, as he as uh, James said, you, Mr. Rogers formula, right? Mm -hmm. We sort of built like this great little formula. Now it was a it, this was the fourth episode, so it was a really good chance to um, mix it up a bit. And uh, turn it into a game show for yeah. one episode. And also uh, kind of parody something that. A lot of people, maybe not the kids, but a lot of people uh, know or knew of. Yeah, the the writing process for that one was was really interesting to talk about because a, a friend of mine at the time was going through a, a, a game throw binge phase. You know, he'd he'd be talking about, oh, uh, he, uh, you guys want to watch some classic episodes of Match Game and whatnot, and so I just sort of thought, well. Um, I think Jody came up with the title "Friendship Game." She said you might not, you might be able to change that if you don't like it. And then I just said, "Let's just turn it into a game show." Mm -hmm. And so we start throwing in all these different uh, references to different game shows. And initially, it wasn't going to be just a, a straight knockoff of uh, "Who Wants to Be a Millionaire." I, we had say, we had different talking points about how you can. The questions were all geared towards how can you be a friend to your autistic buddy, and uh, so we, I, and it, we initially uh, had all all these different segments, which essentially spoofed different game shows, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, paid homage to different stuff, and what we settled on was just strictly the mainly the who wants to be a millionaire formula with a, a few verbal references tossed in little, little things thrown in there. <laughs> To, to other shows, so it was, uh, it, it, it turned out to be a great episode, I'm really, I'm really proud of that one. Yeah, I also got to do a, a, a couple more voices about someone who's, you know, you know, picking on somebody or being mean mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Since this is a very frequent and major topic among uh, people of all ages within our community, could you tell us a little bit more about what the approach that uh, the program and GCB and Blue BT we have to bullying. Hmm. Well, I know that it's it is very uh, tricky having working with kids. Um, I, I, I like I said I work uh, as part of an after school program and stuff, and it's just it's hard because a lot of it is kids can be they don't know the difference between like just kind of ribbing on each other, like just kind of like giving each other a hard time mm -hmm. just for the sake of it, because that's. That's what a lot of that's what a lot of people do. I mean, even now among my own like group of friends, we give each other a hard time all the time. The, and then there's like the actual meanness, and usually you can tell um, about like who's genuinely like being really mean stuff mm -hmm. they say and like the harsh the harsh things they say, or even um, when it gets down to like the physical stuff, um, it's 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 really hard to deal with it. My question is, how can people get involved with Geek Club Books? Hmm, well, uh, I believe you can uh, go to our website at www.geekclubbooks.com and find okay. the e email there, and uh, uh, there uh, there should be uh, other options up yeah. on the site. Yeah, we have a, uh, you know, you can send us an email on our contact page. Uh, we have a, uh, you can join our free membership list. Mm -hmm. um, and we can like you know share any of the opportunities that we have coming up, um, and this is also it's also a great place where you get access to our our digital comics, mm -hmm. Bluebe our Bluebe TV episodes, and uh, other good uh, resources. It's a good mm -hmm. place to share resources. Great. So um, you, I wanted to ask about your experience in voice acting. What other type of voice acting have you done? 
Um, well, I've I've mostly done um, I've done like some uh, a few apps. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I've been in the business for a while, mm -hmm. but um, I haven't done quite yet. I'm getting there. What I really mm -hmm. want to do, which is character work. Okay. Love to be in animation. Um, I've done a few video games, though. Mm -hmm. um, one that just recently came out was uh, I was in Mafia Three. <laughs> right. That was pretty. I had a. It was a pretty fun time. I did some. Sweet. I did motion capture for that too. You smile at a crocodile. Okay. <laughs> I smiled at a crocodile, and 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 ran like a like a Bugs Bunny cartoon character. <laughs> awesome. Well. Tell us about about opportunities in the Geek Club book. Well, um, we are welcoming a lot of people who, you know, of various uh, talents who are on the spectrum. So we can, we like to share um, everyone's talents, like uh, through if they're like animators who are on the spectrum, writers on the spectrum, um, actors, you know, uh, musicians, whatever. There's plenty of opportunity if you go to our website and get into our, like, our contact page, um, or look at our, our pages, you can kind of see that really the best requirement we have is just to, you know, share your talents with us and, uh, and your experiences. Yeah, I believe we have uh, several artists on the website mm -hmm. as well. Uh, a lot of people uh, within the autism community, uh, uh, seem, they, they seem to, to gravitate towards visual mediums mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yes. And so we have a, a lot of artists who work with us who are actually very talented. And, uh, I, and I'm glad you brought this up because I could actually think of a, four, a few more people I could probably invite to the, to the club myself. Yeah, and, like, and also we can get uh, teachers or parents and stuff. Um, it's a good place to uh, get resources on uh, how to spread awareness and uh, you know, just kind of talk about you know what autism is, and just you know, spread information. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's very consistent with what Ascend does. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to drill down a little bit more about what type of awareness do you wish to convey, and what is the overall philosophy that uh, Geek Club Books and its associated enterprises has as far as uh, the autistic community. Who should we be? What should we project? What should we expect from the neurotypical community? Well, our, our catchphrase when we were starting out was, you know, I'm unique, I'm a geek. <laughs> and that's basically like, you know, I'm, I'm happy with who I am. I'm very comfortable in like, you know, this is who I am. And I'm, I'm proud to share it with everybody. I have value. And so, like I said, you know, you can, this is a great uh, community to sort of share you know, what you can do and who you are. So that's, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it started with you know, how I can showcase my own talents. That, you know, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm on the spectrum, but I also, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor who's you know, now become a member of the Screen Actors Guild mm -hmm. and stuff. And you know, I, I, I go to classes and I attend these, I attend these huge voiceover parties that are full of people and noise, but I'm able to do that now. Mm -hmm. I would never have been able to do that mm -hmm. when I was when I was younger, but mm -hmm. now I can. I've I've grown, and so this is a great way to. And, and the best way I grew was through sharing my you know, is to express myself through what I love to do, and that's kind of what we like to promote. Just you know, be yourself, mm -hmm. and hopefully it'll build you know mm -hmm. that self confidence. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to ask you folks uh, a, a personal question, um, maybe rather difficult. Mm -hmm. For those of us in our community, what if we don't like ourselves? What if we may or may not have talents, but whether we do or we don't, we aren't supported? What would you recommend? I mean, clearly you came from a position of where you aren't as happy and successful as you are now. How did you get there? How did you get here from there? And what would you recommend for our viewers, our support people, who know someone who isn't where you are yet? Um, if, I, if I may, James, um, I can't answer on behalf of anybody. Everybody's experience is different, yeah. obviously. But 
for me, I found that I'm at my most happy and I really want to do something. I really, I really feel like I want to put myself out there when I'm doing something that I love to do. Everybody has something that they like, whether it's, you know, I mean, nowadays we live in a, we live in a, uh, an environment where you can get paid to, to sit around and play video games online and then get paid for it. <laughs> so there are ways you, uh, you need to find them. Um, and, and you, you just need to kind of figure out and it's just, what am I, what do I like to do and how do I do that? And yeah, I know um, the other part of it is having a good support system. And I know that not everybody out there is blessed with a great support system, but that's why mm -hmm. we have places like Ascend or Geek Club book, Books, these resources that you can go to, and they can give you that support you need. Mm -hmm. But personally, the best way to achieve self-satisfaction is doing what you love to do. When I when I went to when I traded my uh, my uh, when I went to the job with children interacting with, uh, you know, the after school program that I work mm -hmm. at now, I I I'm find it much more uplifting than my, uh, my old part-time job. And I feel like I want to, you know, do more stuff and, you know, I want to, you know, go back and take martial arts classes again, help me lose weight and stuff. And I didn't have that drive when I was doing my old job, and now I'm doing something that is rewarding and fulfilling to me. So it's just something that I like to do, and it just, it just gives you that extra boost. Mm-hmm. I'm... I, I, I come from a, a semi-individualist uh, background, but uh, the, uh, but uh, to sort of answer your question, I, it's always it's always good to at least first uh, find a find a community. You know, look up what it what it is about yourself uh, wherever you can. Whether it's if you have a library system, you know, look up. Uh, look up um, online and find find out people out there who who are much like yourself who can who you can reach out to and find and find a support system and what but mainly also don't uh, don't hesitate to push yourself yeah. what and they'll they'll be working at jobs and have have difficult things happen like anxiety or pan mm -hmm. panic attacks mm -hmm. and whatnot, and just be you know I try to help those uh, situations and just say everybody's got that to to an extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean the, this is the human condition. You may not end up uh, supporting yourself with a a job that you like all the time, and there's times where I don't like I I don't like my other jobs outside of geek club books you know how could I not like this job but uh, but in any case uh, uh, we we're all gonna have those days and at the end of the day mm -hmm. you need uh, you need someone to talk to to just you know yeah. let whatever let, let whatever it is out and, and one just one really quick final note um, learn about yourself learn about like how you're if you if you have disability learn about how it works mm -hmm. It's a good way to, you know, maybe you can help yourself or maybe help other people to understand, okay, this is why I need to step out of the room for a while because I'll have an anxiety attack or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This was very inspiring, mm -hmm. folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for a particularly inspiring show. Um, uh, Jonathan Murphy and James Sullivan of Geek Club Books. For this week's program, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. And this is Ascend TV. Until next time, have a very good week. Bye-bye. Okay.